Welcome to Deep Dive. I'm your host, Kevin Benedict, and I want to thank all of you guys out there for joining us here. I'm so excited today to have Karel Cooper join us today. He's the SVP with global marketing and of global marketing with Live Intent, a really interesting company that I hope to dig deep into today. Karel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Really uh, looking forward to this and looking forward to having a great conversation here. All right. So I'm calling in today from Mountain View, California. Where are you calling in from? I am in Lower Manhattan, uh, live in tent. We are located at 222 Broadway. Uh, I would say a couple hundred yards away from uh, World Trade Center. So all the way all down. All right. Yeah. I've been there often. So thank you again for joining us at the end of your day here. So talk to us a little bit about yourself. Now, I know lots of people know who you are, but for those that don't, give us some background. Yeah, sure. So uh, first and foremost, I'm a Jersey guy, uh, born and raised in New Jersey. Uh, lived in Jersey my entire life, still there today, obviously. Uh, married for 15 years and have uh, two wonderful uh, daughters at, at home, so they certainly uh, keep me busy. I like to tell people all the time, you know, when I when I leave the office, my day is really just beginning because I have like school, I have fifth grade homework to do, and I get home and those sorts of things. So, Absolutely, I understand. Yeah. I understand how it works. So, how would you describe yourself uh, from a career perspective? What yeah, yep, what's your get, career? Yeah, I was going to get into that. So, uh, I've been in the I would say ad tech and martech space now. Uh, for a little over 18 years. Um, I'm currently at Live Intent, been at Live Intent for four years now as the SVP of, of global marketing. And, and essentially what that means is I lead our, our marketing organization and a talented group of, of marketers and various aspect, aspects of, of marketing. So everything from product marketing to uh, demand gen to creative and our branding uh, to events, uh, as well as uh, public relations uh, falls under sort of my, my role and responsibilities. Uh, prior to joining Live Intent, I was at a local news publisher called Advanced Digital. Uh, I was there for almost eight years, uh, leading the ad operations team uh, and helping manage the partnerships and relationships with a lot of the, the platform vendors that we use. So whether it was an ad serving vendor or uh, a data management platform or viewability company that also sort of fell under my, my responsibility. So uh, I grew up in this space on the operation side. Uh, when I came to Live Intent, I made the transition to leading account management for a little bit. And over the last couple of years, I've, I've made transition from account management to product marketing uh, and, and now marketing. Well, that's fascinating. It always seems like it would be such an interesting role to be in marketing at a marketing vendor, so you have two kinds of marketing, right? You're trying to marketing. You're trying to market marketing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And and you know we have the way I look at it is we have internal customers and we have external customers, right? Uh, internally, uh, the sales team, uh, the customer success team, and sort of making sure that they're trained up, making sure that they're on brand, making sure that they understand the latest and greatest about our, our products and our services. Obviously, we work closely with the product team. And then externally, right, it's, it's making sure that our customers understand how to utilize Live Intense platforms and services to get uh, the, the most out of it and to accomplish their goals. It's also creating awareness in the marketplace. Oh, yeah. So that we are top of mind as well when they're planning out their their uh, year and their quarter and looking where to, to, to allocate dollars and get the most out of it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating and uh, I like it, but uh, yes, we're marketers trying to market to marketers. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and so in addition to all this, the, the fathering, the daughters and the marketing to marketing, marketers, <laughs> marketing, <laughs> you also have a podcast called The Minority Report. Talk to us about that. 
Yeah, so uh, a buddy of mine uh, and I, Eric Reckiden, uh, who uh, runs programmatic sales for a company called Intermarkets, uh, we started the podcast back in uh, June of last year. Uh, and the idea really was to uh, create a platform where uh, people of color, uh, women, uh, people of diverse backgrounds uh, have a place to sort of tell their story and people in the advertising and marketing industry have a place to tell their story. And so it, it, it's less about getting together and talking about the nuts and bolts of the industry, right? And it's more about getting together and really sort of talking about, you know, an individual's background, their upbringing, how they got into advertising and marketing, uh, how do they mentor others? Um, what do they look for in mentors? Their, um, their, their opinions on sort of the diversity and inclusion within our space and, and things that we need to do to sort of make it, make it better and more of a, uh, inclusive, uh, industry. So that, that's really sort of the, the, the gist of the podcast and the content, uh, behind it. And like I said, we started it back in June. Uh, we've had, we've done eight episodes, uh, so far, uh, the feedback has been really positive, uh, mm. across our industry and really looking forward to, uh, taking it to the next level in 2019. That's terrific. So how would somebody find this? Yeah, sure. So you can go to best places to go to minority report podcast.com. Uh, and from there, there are links to all eight episodes that we've done so far. Uh, and there are links to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. All uh, right. So on and so forth. So minorityreportpodcast.com. And it's, almost always like you, it's almost like you know how to market yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone out there is listening, uh, we are always looking for new guests to come on. Uh, or So if you yourself want to be a guest or if you have someone you want to recommend, please do uh, hit us up. Perfect. So let's jump into the discussion on marketing now, Corel. Talk to me. What have you seen change in marketing over the last five years? To me, you know, I'm a technology analyst by trade for many years here, been following all the emerging technologies, writing all kinds of reports and speaking on it. And it just seems to me that the kinds of technology being applied in marketing um, means that some of the biggest digital transformation of anywhere in the company happens in marketing and sales. Right. So how have you seen a change over the last five years? What's your experience there? Yeah, you know, I, I think obviously from a, from a marketing standpoint, right, you, you need to be where your customers are, right, or, and where your prospects are. And I think one of the, the biggest things that I see, and I even see it in my own household with, with my 10-year-old with, with my daughter, right, is just the way that people are um, consuming and accessing content, Right. Uh, not only do you have a, a laptop and a, and a phone, right, but, you know, audio podcasts are, 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 are growing tremendously. I myself listen to a lot of audio books and consume a lot of podcasts. So there's, there's the audio aspect of it. There's the voice uh, aspect of it now with things like Echo in the home. There's mm -hmm. obviously OTT, right? So I think, I think the way uh, a, a consumer is consuming content the, the number of avenues is, is growing uh, tremendously, right? And I think that that uh, in itself uh, creates challenges for marketers, right? Because, you know, uh, you not only have, you know, your traditional TV and, and print and radio, but now you have all these other places where your consumers are. And so it's not only sort of where you're reaching them and how you're reaching them, but it's also the measurement behind it and what's being effective for you, right? And I think that, uh, I think that that's a challenge for us uh, and has been a, a big change, I would say, over the last five years or so. Man, when you think about it, I remember just going back in my career to the early days where marketing was all about, you know, designing a piece of collateral like a, and then taking it to the printer and yeah. having the printer get the right color schemes and the right thing, and then you can hand it out, right? Right, or you can, right. Right. Like create those mailers. Today, this, the, as you just pointed out, the incredible array of different uh, venues in which advertising can be done. So right. now, if I understand live intents, um, one of the key things that it does is makes uh, kind of what you call a, a next generation email. Is that, is that a good description? 
I, yeah, I, I would say so. You, you know, we and and we we get confused with others sometimes because we do operate within email newsletters, right? But from a live attempt perspective, um, we don't we don't send email and we don't power a lot of the uh, editorial content that's in newsletters, right? Ooh. What we what we do do though is you know we work with our our two thousand publishers and brands that utilize our platform to help them uh, acquire, retain, and also monetize their audience within uh, within the inbox, right? So great example is take one of our, our top uh, clients of the New York Times, for example, right? So the New York Times sends out a ton of emails uh, on a daily, weekly, uh, monthly basis to their subscribers, right? So if you sign up for today's headline, or breaking news, or one of their uh, categories like sports or travel, right? When a newsletter gets sent to you in your inbox and you open that newsletter, there's all the content that that the New York Times has written about it. And chances are, if you click on one of those pieces of content, it'll then link out to the larger article on their website. But also within the New York Times newsletter are gonna be marketing units, right? And those marketing units is what's powered by our platform. All right, so we are one, we're, we're now creating a, a new product for the New York Times digital ad sales team to go out and sell to their advertisers, similar to how they would on their websites, right? But if the New York Times doesn't sell all that inventory, we actually have our own sales team here that goes out and, and reps the live intent network of the 2000 publishers so we can we can then help the New York Times monetize that and send them and send them a check, right? Uh, and then, and then, you know, and then the the other part of that is we can also work closely with the marketing team at the New York Times, right? Because if you think about email newsletters, right, it's it's one of the it's one of the most highly engaged uh, uh, platforms that there is, right? You've actually gone to a website and then given them your email address, which is personal to you, and have asked them to deliver content to you in your inbox. So when you open that newsletter, you're highly engaged, right? So we could also work with someone like the New York Times and their marketing team who's tasked with growing their subscribers to say, hey, you know, run uh, uh, acquisition campaigns across our, our network, if you will, and help grow your subscription list. Or we can work with a retailer who has a product to sell to advertise across our network to you know sell their product. So there's there's a number of different ways which we work with our, our 2000 uh, uh, premium publishers and brands. But you know at a, at a high level, it is to acquire, uh, retain, and, and monetize their their audience. So it, you know I used to think about two different stacks: the marketing stack or the yeah. martech stack and the ad tech mm -hmm. stack. It really sounds like what you're describing is almost a you know a hybrid, a combination of the two. Yeah, yeah, and so and that's exactly what we talk about here at Live Intent is we really think we sit at that intersection of of advertising technology uh, and and marketing technology, and I think the new term in the space now is called Mad Tech. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so yeah, we 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 sit right there, and and again, the way we try to work with our customers is we say, hey you know, take the brains of marketing, right? Take the data that your marketing team has, that your customers have, and marry that with the, the, the power, the horsepower of ad tech, right? To, to, again, accomplish your goals as an organization. Okay, so you've been talking a lot about newsletters, but do you use just regular email setups as well? Um, and is this the same kind of email that our grandmothers knew, or is this a, a new kind with that's a lot smarter? Yeah, so uh, you know, with our with our customers, right? Yeah, we we talk about uh, the marketing units within their email newsletters. But from a marketing standpoint, and how we market to our customers, and how we keep them up to date on the latest and greatest. Yes, we use obviously we use email newsletters as well too to communicate out uh, uh, to our customers. Uh, I would say though, to answer the second part of your question, I, I think certainly, you know, um, email has been, in my opinion, it's like the original social media uh, in my eyes, right? Uh, and it has, I think it's evolved over the last, uh, uh, you know, eight to 10 years. Um, I think as uh, marketers get smarter about understanding their, their customer base, as they get smarter about 
acquiring uh, new customers and communicating with them. Uh, brands are starting to use and publishers are starting to utilize email much more effectively, right? Because you know you can personalize email, uh, you can uh, trigger uh, alerts uh, off of email newsletters. You know, there's there's so many different ways that you can utilize uh, that piece of con that that platform, if you will, to communicate to your customers and prospects. So it has evolved over the years. Yes. Oh, very good. So let let me have you put on your marketing hat. So. Mm -hmm. When you look at marketing strategy and just what you're seeing as a marketer yourself, are customers consuming content different today than they did in the past? Are they reading more newsletters? Are they watching more videos? Are they listening to more podcasts? What are some of the trends that you recognize out there? Honestly, it's, it's all of the above. Uh, I, I think I, I read a stat the other day that said that uh, uh, this year um, email is going to grow to – 3.8 billion users worldwide, right? That's that's half of the world's population, <laughs> if you think about that, right? Uh, and so I think that's, again, why why marketers want to be there. I read another study that said that, you know, 90% uh, of marketers uh, prefer, uh, look at email as their most effective channel as well, too. So email, in, in my eyes, isn't going anywhere. At the same time, these other technologies, these other platforms, they will continue to grow because in some respects, they make people's lives uh, easier. Uh, they're efficient to use, especially things like audio. You know, I, I listen to books on my, on my commute, so on and so forth. So I think, I think you know, um, I think marketers' jobs are going to get a lot tougher in the future because, as we talked about earlier, you have all these different ways of consuming content. It makes it tougher for a marketer to uh, uh, not only – uh, figure out which channel is working, but the the attention span of a, of a person that's utilizing all these different platforms is getting much shorter too. So you have less time to be effective in your messaging. Oh yeah, and you can hyperlink out to any of those different formats from your email. Yeah, absolutely, exactly, exactly. And and again, if I think about my own my own habits, right? Um, uh, I sign up for a lot of email newsletters because I feel that. That's an efficient way for me to get content by being pushed into my inbox. And quite frankly, email is the first thing that I check when I wake up in the morning. And it's the last thing that I check before I go to bed at night. And I'm constantly on it throughout the day, whether it's at work or whether I'm going out to lunch and I have a minute in the elevator ride to look at my email. And I know I'm not the only one. And there are stats out there that back that up. People are... People are on this thing checking their email all the time. Oh, yeah. And if you're an international company, like I'm sure yours is, you know, we have our operations in Europe and our operations in India and other locations. So it's like your email never, never goes to sleep either. Right. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so you talked about it's get, you know, it's almost getting tougher out there for a marketer as well with all the different formats. But, um, you know, talk to me about, what advice you would have for a young person getting in marketing? What skills should they really be preparing to take into the marketplace? Yeah, you know, and, and I'll, I'll, again, I'll speak from my, my own experience because uh, while I'm not uh, a young person in terms of just getting into the industry, I am still relatively young in terms of my marketing experience, right? Like I said, I've I've done operations, account management, and, and more recently over the last couple of years have gotten into marketing. And I think um, from my perspective, creating a network is, is super, super important. And not just a network where uh, you know, it's, a, it's a number, but uh, people out there that you have built will build uh, meaningful relationships with that you can bounce ideas off of, that you can have a conversation, that you can share thoughts, you can't put a price tag on that. I think that's super, super valuable to to be out there and network and and build your own network that you can that you can depend on. Um, I would also say spending time with individuals in other areas of the industry and other areas of your organization. Uh, I think one thing that's been very beneficial for me, again, my background of operations and account management. So I've got this sort of cross-functional experience that I'm now bringing into the marketing world and helping lead the team, which I think is valuable. But, you know, uh, constantly spending time with sales and customer success people that are on the front line 
speaking to customers, uh, I think is super important. Uh, building great relationships with the product team, which, you know, if there's no product, there's no marketing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, being in sync with those folks, I, I think is, is super, super important. So for anyone uh, coming into experienced or not coming into uh, this, this space and coming into marketing, those would be some thoughts that I, I would have. And then I would also say is never stop learning. You know, our space continues to evolve, continues to change. Uh, there's a lot going on. In my opinion, no one's really an expert. No one really knows anything. So continuing to always sort of learn and be out there and keep an open mind to things are, 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 are things that I, I would recommend to folks. So, Karel, are there any technologies that you think – that if you had a background in those particular technologies, it's really going to be an asset to you in marketing going forward? Um, so, yeah. So uh, I, I would say um, my sort of platform experience and understanding data management platforms uh, really helps me today uh, internally and externally when, when it comes to looking at how we segment our own customer base, even down to specific personas and how we want to market to them. I think has been uh, super helpful and important. Uh, my days in leading account management and being customer facing. Mm -hmm. uh, so understanding, really understanding what our customers, how they think, uh, what they want, uh, what challenges they have is, has really helped me in terms of translating that to where live intent fits into sort of their uh, helping them uh, accomplish their business goals. So yes. Yep. Oh, terrific. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, I'm going to slide a crystal ball in front of you there and yeah. ask you, you know, where do you see marketing going? You know, what's the trends that you think that are really going to impact marketing over the next three to five years? Yeah, um, I, I, think, I think the importance of, of data, right, and, and you can unpack that in many different ways, uh, continues to be at the forefront of what we do. But I think two sub-bullet points to that which I think are really important is creative and how uh, learnings uh, about our customers and learnings uh, help inform uh, the types of messaging we use, the types of imagery that we use and how we use that to communicate. Like, I, you know, I think that, I think that that has, especially in the, in the, in the ad tech space, I think creative has been uh, a lost art and a, and a, and a missed opportunity. Uh, you know, I, I like to say all the time that, you know, you can put the right ad in front of the right user at the right time. But if the creative stinks, there's no, there's no substitute for that. It, it just isn't going to work. So I think utilizing data and how that transform in, transforms into building better messaging, and better creative, I think, uh, uh, is going to be super important in the future. I also think that that translates into uh, user experience, right? As we talk about all these different platforms that people are using to consume content, the one thing that is uh, consistent about the platforms that are growing is that they're easy for people to use. They make people's lives a little bit better uh, and, uh, and efficient, right? And I think uh, user experience is a part of that. And so the, the more that marketing can impact uh, a, a, user, a user experience, I think, I think the better off. You know, you think about sort of, again, thinking about live intent and the many different hats our marketing team wears here, right? Uh, we send out emails. Uh, we have a website. Uh, we have a business that we're trying to, to grow. Uh, you know, utilizing our own products and services, uh, we try to do that as much as we can. Uh, and from a marketing perspective, and when we utilize our own live intent products and services, we pass that feedback back to the product team, right? So to me, that impacts potential user customer experience in the future as well, too. So that's what I mean by, you know, we can, we can definitely play a role in that and have an influence in, in user experience from a marketing perspective. Great. Corral, thank you so much for sharing that with us. So the one last question before wrapping up here, what, you know, when should a company call you guys? Uh, company should call us. If, if, if you send email, give us a call. <laughs> you know, if, if, you are, if you send email and you're trying to grow your subscriber list or you have a product to sell, uh, give us a call. 
uh, and I'm sure we can we can certainly help you. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you so much for sharing your insights, your experiences, and industry knowledge with all of us today, Carl. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yep, and I want to thank everybody out there that's tuned in for joining us today as well.